Hello YouTubers, it is of course me, Trollface the Man, and a happy new year to you all. If it is the new year, well, while you're watching this video, which it is right now, uh, while I'm recording it. But, uh, well, eh, I think it's about 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the ball drops, and I'm gonna be quite honest, I am not a big fan of going out and partying and just being in social situations like that, so instead I am here recording a video. Yay! Today's video is quite simple. It is going to be a basic modification to take a charger like this that's meant to charge AA and AAA batteries. Uh, there you go, you can see. And convert it to charge something like this. I've had my flashlight here running for about an hour and inside of it I have two. D cell batteries. This will also work for C cell batteries or really any other battery that uh, will use the same voltage. Uh, the same technology and voltage, should I say. Uh, so these are some D cell batteries. First off, I want to say these, energi bleh, these Energizer batteries are garbage. I really suggest not buying it, in my personal opinion, uh, because these things are a ripoff. They also sell the D-cell size ones, and guess what the D-cell ones are, if you get them through Energizer. They're one of these, tucked away inside of a D-cell uh, shell, and you're getting literally the same capacity, like 1300 milliamp hours. A battery brand that I recommend instead is these EBLs. This is 1300 uh, milliamp hours. These are 2300 milliamp hours, though they actually test to be more about hmm, 2000. So not quite advertised, but even these things test about 1100 milliamp hours. But the point is, these are cheaper than these, and they are much better. Just because it's a name brand does not mean you should trust it, because a lot of times they take advantage of that exact belief. So how are we going to do this mystical uh, modification to let me charge these batteries in this thing, which obviously does not currently work? It's stupidly simple, to be honest. Uh, it's something that, when I do it, it's just going to make so much sense. All I'm going to need for this is, these are a couple of little uh, nuts, two of them and a wire. And uh, yeah, you might be going, how did those things make this charge this? Well, give me one second and I will show you. I'm going to plug into my soldering iron while I get things prepared. Well, I also should grab some solder too. <sighs> be right back. So I should mention that uh, I only recommend these for smart chargers ones that automatically detect when the uh, cell is charged and thereby will cut off its charging while uh, it reaches its full capacity or when it reaches its full capacity. Uh, by doing this, you are also going to potentially uh, lose a feature that many of these chargers, more expensive chargers have, which is uh, thermal uh, detection. So this would not be recommended to be used on any type of smart charger that doesn't just use voltage, but also uses thermal detection. The dumb chargers that just push current, not recommended for because these batteries are gonna be a lot, lot bigger than these batteries, which is probably made for, and thereby the just brunt force current pushing won't work very well. But I guess you could also say, you know, these batteries are about seven, eight times bigger, do seven or eight charge cycles, but yeah. Anyways, this is a smart charger, I had it. It's a eShine S4, I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll also put a link to these EBL batteries, which I do recommend. Um, but these, uh, this battery charger has worked great so far. And like I said, it just does the voltage detection. So to get to this, I'm going to take, I have a piece of wire. You're actually going to need two of them uh, for each battery and uh, two nuts for each wire. So I got this piece of wire here. I'm gonna zoom in. I got this piece of wire here and I've already stripped about an inch off the end here. So what I'm gonna do is take the nut 
and slip it right over top of this wire here. Mm. And now I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to fold it over and twist it around. And you could say that that's good. It probably would be good. Uh, it, I mean, it's, it's holding pretty tight. It's making a good electrical connection as long as you twist it well. But uh, I like uh, my stuff a little bit more permanent. So I have my soldering iron heat, heated up over here. And an unnecessary step, I'm going to solder that to make sure that it really holds. So same thing with this other nut here. Just take the wire, run it through, fold it over, pinch the wires, and then twist the nut. And we should get... Uh, oh, that one isn't as good. But uh, this one, you can see we have the wire nice and twisted over. Sorry for my disgusting fingers, but uh, yeah, working hands. Nice scars and all nicked up. So now, and this will all make sense in a minute if, if you haven't already figured out my little trick to do this. Um, now what I'm going to do is, once again, optional step, but it should make this more permanent. Zoom back in here, actually. I take a little solder and just solder that copper together. And the same thing for the other side, right at where we twisted it together. This will make a uh, permanent joint. No, it did take, okay. That's gonna be very, very tough. Perfect. Okay, so the secret sauce of this is going to be these. Neodymium. I think also pronounced, yeah, whatever. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. Neodymium, neodymium, whatever. Magnets, rare earth magnets. And they have uh, what I believe is a nickel coating to them. It's a conductive coating. These are very strong magnets. And you can get them for pretty cheap. Um, sometimes you can even get them right at the dollar store. These are smaller ones, which are better for this. But I'm just going to take, ooh, oopsies. For this, uh, I got two batteries. I got two of these D-cell batteries. So I am going to take uh, eight of these uh, magnets. Four. And... Uh, oops. Once again, very strong. They snap back together every time I try and separate them. There we go. So four and four. So the way we are going to do this is I'm going to take these batteries and I'm going to lay them like that. I'm going to put one of these magnets on the top, the positive, and one on the negative. And I'm sure you probably you can already figure out where this is going to go. I'm now going to take uh, another one of these magnets and put them on the positive here. Another one negative here. Obviously, if your uh, batteries have some type of top that is like non-magnetic, this won't work, which I don't think even the copper tops, I do believe, are uh, copper coated. Or if your charger here has like, let's say for example, brass contacts, which I also would think is unlikely, it won't work because it's not magnetic. But these are magnetic, so hear that nice snap there. Snapping one nut to the positive here, and I'm snapping it to the positive of the battery. And I'm taking another one of the nuts on the wire. I already prepared other ones, so I have these other wires here. Snapping it here, and you can see it is starting to charge. And these are bigger batteries, so I'm gonna change the charging current up to 1000 milliamp hour, or milliamps per hour, or whatever you wanna say. And this will charge the battery, uh, and it will shut off automatically, just like it does with the uh, double A's, because this specific circuit detects uh, the voltage. When the voltage goes up, it, it shuts off uh, charging. But once again, you have to be careful because some of these uh, things rely on thermal sensors. And you definitely do not want to uh, do this with a thermal sensor-based unit because uh, that will be able to detect anymore because this is obviously out of here. But I got my other battery here. I'm going to do the same thing. Positive, positive. Just like that. Negative, negative. And you can see that that is now charging too. And I can say with certainty, I've already done this in a more crude fashion and it 100% works. I got these batteries about, 
whew, I want to say maybe 30% charged when they arrived. And I let them sit on for a couple hours using the same exact method and they charged fully without any issues at all. They turned off properly, they didn't overheat, they worked great and the unit just treats it as any other battery that would normally be inside of these contacts. Beautifully simple mod, can work for D cells, C cells. Uh, I mean, this obviously already works for double A's and triple A's, but any type of nickel metal hydroxide. I think this also, uh, this also charges nickel cadmium uh, batteries and lithium ones. Should work the same, the same exact way, it just automatically detects the battery. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Once again, I will put a link for this charger in the description uh, for these EBL batteries. I got them on Amazon. They're actually very cheap and very good so far. I, I've had no problems with them. These batteries had a lot of problems with them. Uh, I think it particularly was the charger that came with them. Uh, the Energizer charger never shut off properly. These batteries uh, felt like they were about to catch fire at one point, which was not very nice at all. The uh, links that I have in the description will be uh, commission links, which means that if you do buy something from there, this channel gets a small kickback from it. Um, just want to let you know that. And uh, on the one last note, I want to thank my patrons who have uh, supported me. Uh, and if you want to become my Patreon, please check out my Patreon link in the description below. Also, uh, for the Patreons that donate over $5 a month, they get their uh, names in this special credit spot at the end of videos. Uh, thanking them. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give me a like and uh, drop a comment. Uh, if you have any other suggestions, uh, I mean, this is pretty simple. I'm sure that there's definitely ways to overcomplicate it if you want to. Maybe even make it better. But yeah, I think that that is just one of the beauties of doing things simply. All right, guys. Bye.